All right, we're here at my Vermihut indoor worm bin. And today we are gonna start a new experiment. We are gonna do a top feeding and we're gonna have a frozen set of food competing against a fresh set of food here. And this is gonna be fantastic. I don't know if you saw my other time-lapse top feeding, but you can really see which foods the worms go to. So we're gonna see if what I've been telling you about frozen food is correct and the worms go for it really quickly versus the regular fresh food. Now, when I say fresh food, I'm using that term loosely because those are all food scraps that have been sitting out. And in some cases, I put them into my refrigerator. So they're not like something that you would eat right away. And this right here is just a little bit of a banana stock. Now, last time we were in here, we fed them some celery stalks, some banana peels, a bigger piece of watermelon and some strawberry tops. We had some pear slices and apple slices. And we put some tomatoes and a whole pear and some Brussels sprout leaves. We also had some leftovers like a mango seed in here. So let's go ahead and dig in and see how they're doing on it. Now it has been 16 days since we were in here. And even though I expect most of the food to be gone, I am seeing some worms right here in this feeding zone layer. And sure enough, check it out. They are all in and out of it. And all I'm seeing really is just kind of the papery parts of some of the food scraps we have in here. Like this looks like it could be part of a banana peel. And I thought I saw maybe some watermelon peel right there, but lots of worms. I just pick up a handful and right away, tons of worms in there. So let's go ahead and keep digging down. Now, you'll notice that most of this looks like castings and that's because this top feeding tray has been going for about 56 days and after this last feeding here we are going to go ahead and rotate the trays now it's not like this has been on for 56 days and that's it that's how quickly vermicompost takes because this tray spent about 120 days down below as an inoculating tray and that's where i put just a bunch of dry bedding down and let all the moisture and stuff from the food scraps drip down because what we have here is a four layer tray tower system for this worm bin. This is the Vermi Hut. So let's keep looking all over and see how everything is doing in here. In every part that I go, even places that weren't the feeding zone, there are lots of worms. And again, you can see some of the longer food or the fast food um, is still in here. And this again, just another piece of a banana stock. And I feel something over here too, another banana stock. So kind of building up a collection there. And I thought I felt a seed as well. So let's look and see what this is. This is another uh, slow food and that is an avocado peel or whatever you call the shell or you know the part that the avocado flesh sits in. Let's keep looking. Go to this corner over here. And man, this is, I could take this right now and harvest it and I'd have fantastic castings. But as I go through it, I'm also seeing lots of worms and lots of cocoons. So stay tuned to the next video where I show you how I harvest in my vermi hut. Or you can go back to some of my old videos. Every time I rotate and harvest, I give you a little peek at how I do it. Let's dig down here because I'm seeing this orange part and I think this is a little piece of tomato. They always leave the skin. Eventually this will get eaten but not right now. And here's another piece right there. I think I feel the mango seed. So let's see if this right here is an avocado shell that just happened to be on the mango seed. But let's see if I'm gonna be able to get into it or if the worms are in here. And let's see, oh, I think I can peel it open. I don't know if any worms have been in, but we will take a look. And oh, a little bit harder than I thought, trying not to fling it across the kitchen here. But right there is the cotyledon, which is kind of the seed and the leaves that the mango would produce if it was living. And inside there, look at that, right there where my finger is. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is one solitary worm that thought that he or she, or I guess they're hermaphrodites, hit the jackpot. So I'm gonna just put this right back in here and we'll let that worm kind of be the, the scout worm for that mango seed. All right, let's come over here to this other side and see how we're doing here. And again, sure enough, lots of worms again. This is great. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dig all around and mix everything up and then we will be right back. Lots of lots of worms. What is this? This right here. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is the pineapple. So a couple times ago, we put a pineapple in here. It, I think, was resting over here when we did our time lapses of the surface feeding. And the worms are all in and out of the fibers of it right here. So pineapple, definitely a slow food. <laughs> in fact, I think when I said fast food before, I meant to say slow food. But yes, pineapple is a slow food here. So we're going to keep that going.
Okay, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna almost do a two-part feeding here. I'm gonna put in some bedding because this is a lot of castings and it still is gonna spend another week or two as the top tray and then it's gonna go down to be the pre-harvest tray and another 60 days before it gets harvested. So I'm gonna add a bunch of bedding and we'll put this food that's left over down in there as well. So in goes a bunch of dry bedding here and a little bit more. And what we'll do is, it doesn't have to necessarily be alone in the trench like that. I'll mix it up a little bit. And then we are going to put all this stuff right in here as well. And then I'm just gonna bury this up so we can set up for our top feeding of the frozen and the non-frozen or the frozen and the raw food so that we can see how these worms do. So let me go ahead and just set up the flat area here. All right, so I think we've got our area set up. Let's go ahead and bring the food in. So we'll start with our raw food and we're gonna put it on this side of the bin. So I'm gonna start with this watermelon right here and I really wanna push it down. <laughs> I just sprayed myself. But I really wanna push it down so that the worms can get to it from the sides here. So it'll just be a little bit buried like that. And you can tell it's fresh because I just squirted a bunch out. And then we've got our lettuce stock right there and I'll kind of put it like that. And then we've got our apple. We've got a cucumber and I cut this directly in half. So the other half is gonna be the frozen one. We've got a little bit of a tomato right here. We'll see how they do with that. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of drape the, let's move the apple over and we'll drape the banana peel right here like this. And then let's try and set up this side with a frozen food just like we did with this side. So here we go, here's the frozen. So put that right there and push it down. Very slippery because it's icy. Just kind of get it down right there like that. We'll put our banana right next to this banana right there. We've got our apple. Now this is just a chewed apple. This was cut up, but we'll do that. And then we've got our lettuce stock right here. And then we've got our little tomato. And then we've got our cucumber right there. So yeah, two halves of the same cucumber. So there we go, there is the setup. I'm just gonna kind of move this over here like this. Everything's down how I want it. We're all set there. So tell you what, let's go ahead and take a little preview of how this went. All right, so that was just a couple of the days. So go ahead and stay tuned to the next video where I'm gonna have at least 10 days of this and we're gonna be able to see how the frozen food does against the raw food. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope your worm bins are doing fantastic. So half of them are composting, everybody. Take care now. And we're gonna get to see you guys every day.